Hello, hello, hello. What's up, folks? How's everybody doing today? How's everybody feeling? Make sure I got everything set up so I can see it. How's my audio sounding? Let me know. Because I might might try and bring this microphone closer to me so y'all can hear me better we got nc in the house what's up we got uk in the house love your videos and style fujifilm is amazing camera awesome thanks for watching but yeah i hope everyone's doing all right i'm guessing we have some people here on the evening we have some morning Afternoon, folks. I guess it's more like the afternoon, but I literally just woke up a while ago. <laughs> we got Indiana in the house. What's up? Hello, hello. Good morning. So basically, this is going to be another kind of normal stream that I have. Um, and just to give you all some insight to how I like the stream, basically, when I have wedding work that I have to do, because obviously that's kind of like my first job, um, I just like to share with you all me editing and calling. So you can kind of see the process from a wedding photographer's point of view of how I'm editing and approaching things. So feel free to hang out, ask questions ask questions about how I'm editing and everything and watch the whole process. So this was a wedding I did. It's been about a week now, I think. These are just a couple of the photos I've gone ahead and edited. I made a preview for the couple. I usually do that about 24 hours after the wedding. And yeah, I need to go through now and call all the photos and then edit the photos so I can deliver them. Um, obviously, we're still dealing with the pandemic. So this wedding was per the rules that North Carolina are currently open two so we're in phase two so we can have events with 25 people outdoors or 10 people indoors obviously with social distancing and stuff so that's what we have here a nice little pandemic wedding or mini ceremony mini money as some people are calling it <laughs> we got argentina in the house what's up portugal minnesota Good stuff. We got everyone in here. Thank you all for all the love. There's a lot going on right now. We're not going to talk too much about that stuff. It's always, it's, it's such a hard place to be in because like you want to talk about the stuff and you know, like, you know, it's, it's important stuff, but then on the same end, like you don't want to drive yourself crazy. So it's like this weird middle ground where it's important and you want to talk about it but then you don't want to drain yourself out. So yeah, we're just going to be hanging out today, editing some photos. You know, I still got to pay the bills. I still got to feed my family. So here we are doing the work. So typically what I start out doing is after I've imported all my photos, so these are all just the raw photos. We're going to jump into photo mechanic. So here's Photo Mechanic, and then I will go into my folders where I keep all my raw files. And this is actually a good look of how I like to sort everything out. So basically I have a photos drive where I keep all the raw photos on. And then I also have multiple places where I back up all that stuff. I section everything off by year. So I took 2020 or 2019 out because I've backed that up already, but 2020 is here now. I have my weddings. These are the weddings I've done so far this year. And then here's the folder that I want to call. It's only me, so I just need this one folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then here are all the photos from the day. I'm gonna sort it not by file name, but by capture time. That makes it easier to call because since I have two cameras, I want all the photos from the day to line up rather than maybe them sorting them differently because of the file name. 
Hey folks. Hello, hello. Where am I from? I'm in North Carolina. North Carolina. Take your shirt off, whip it around your head if y'all know that song. <laughs> Alright, so this thing is still trying to sort by capture time real quick. And there it is. So now I know that I have every photo in order, no matter what camera it came from. And now I can switch into culling. So I'm gonna double click on the first photo. Let's just make sure y'all can see it. And then yeah, I can use either the arrow key and I usually five star stuff or I can just use the scroll wheel on my mouse, which is faster. And then I'm just gonna be hitting five basically and picking the photos that I wanna keep. And if y'all watched my um, video, about editing photos on the iPad where I talked about the yes method of culling. That's basically what I'm doing now. If a photo grabs me and I feel like it works, then I click five. It's just, it's that simple. There's not a lot of thought to culling. Any tips for booking your first wedding? Uh, so I have, I do have a video that I made on that. Let me actually find that for you all. Um, that's a good place to start. If I can find it is the real question. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Thank you for that sub. So here is a video that talks about a couple of tips for booking your first wedding, but a real uh, a big part of it is just understanding kind of where you are as a photographer. Don't be afraid to take like cheaper weddings. I would go ahead and do that. If you have any close friends or friends of friends, do those, do them for cheap. Um, but just make sure that you're not taking on too large of a wedding. So like if you know someone and they're just like, oh, I just want to do like a little whatever. It's just a tiny little thing, whatever. Like take on stuff like that. Because if you take on something that's too serious for you too early, you could get burned um, pretty hard. So I would just say, you know, watch out for that. But yeah, basically that, there's online services you can use. I don't know if Thumbtack is still around, but online services that let you basically sign up and then they give people towards you. Or like the Knot may be a good one. Any service that you can basically bid on finding customers is where you kind of want to start. It's the easiest place, but make sure you're taking on smaller, cheaper weddings to start out. So see, I had my shutter speed too low here. So I get this motion blur. What was my shutter? One, 200. He was moving pretty fast. So I should have like, I should have upped my shutter a little bit. So a lot of this stuff was with the XT4. I just handheld it. It was pretty dark, but yeah, my shutter was 1 15th. The Ibis on the XT4 is pretty good. Can you share some of the types of weddings clients have had with the pandemic going on? Sometimes clients ask for ideas of what they can do. Yeah, so I haven't had a lot of pandemic weddings yet. This one I'm calling is actually a pandemic wedding. This one was pretty normal actually. It was just smaller, like less people. Um, and it was kind of cool for me because that's how I got married. 
um, me and my wife had like a small, maybe 30 person wedding. And that's a lot of what people are doing now. So it's still kind of a normal wedding, but just less people. Now I did have a couple who booked me recently and they wanted to, they're thinking about having everyone come in their cars. So that'll be still social distancing because no one's going to be getting out sitting next to each other. And then they're just going to have a big field and everyone will park their cars and, and then watch the wedding that way. Um, that's one way to do it. I think a lot of things come down to just making sure you offer your couples uh, photos still. Like, don't make them, don't let them just go, okay, it's a pandemic. Can you just take photos of the ceremony? You can still get a full, a full day, what I would consider a full day out of a small pandemic wedding. You know, a couple photos of them getting ready, a couple photos of her getting in her dress. That's, I mean, that's what I did for this. This was a small pandemic wedding. It wasn't like a normal thing. Um, their ceremony, family photos, and portraits of them together. You take those parts and you still deliver that to them. And the good part is they'll still feel like it's a wedding day, you know what I mean? And I think that's, as a, photographers, that's our job right now. Um, you know, as sad as it is for a lot of couples and the fact that, you know, they had to cancel their normal plans, our biggest job is to still make it feel like the wedding day that they dreamed of and wanted. Um, so even here, you can see on their save the dates, you know, this was their original save the date. I did their engagement session too. So April 4th was supposed to be their wedding, but we ended up doing this in like May or something. So yeah, just try your best to give them a full day. You know, like don't let it just turn into, oh, well, there's a pandemic. So let's just take photos of the ceremony. Like this is Ian and be like, I can do this for you and I can make it feel just as nice because that's what photographers do. We take things and we make them nice. We take them out of context and really display the feeling and what was happening. Uh, da, 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 da. Are you still working on Capture One version of Natural Feels? I am. Oh no, the internet. Y'all. My internet is so bad, I cannot. And then because everyone's home, it's like worse now too. This thing says no data, zero kilobits. How is that possible? Oh my God. I don't, I don't understand what's with my internet. I can't. Why don't you do a, a game stream? I might at some point. Um, I was trying to... I don't want to muddy up this channel too much with just like random stuff. But I'm a pretty heavy gamer, so I'd love to do some game streams. <laughs> Here goes a great example of making sure you pay attention to what's happening. The wind blew over the runner. And it just, it just messed up this whole photo. So I had to go down there and fix it and then take the photo. And it's annoying, but yet again, like you're getting these photos, you know, you're getting these photos for them. That's the point. You want to have good photos. This bride made her dress by herself. It took her forever. <laughs> so here goes um, some lighting and stuff. So you see, I have her standing in front of a window. So the window's to their left. So you can see she's the most lit. And then I try and have anyone else helping her at least catching some of that light. But again, the bride is kind of the main focus. So you want her either facing the light or getting most of the light from the side or something.
So here we go, putting the shoes on. What is your dynamic range on the XT4? Uh, I usually just set it to 100. Um, I should probably start putting it on auto, but I haven't played around with the dynamic range stuff too much. Fortnite or CSGO, I don't really play either. So if I was um, streaming any of those games, you would be seeing me learn them for the first time. <laughs> I messed around with Fortnite for like two seconds. I didn't, I didn't understand the whole building mechanic like how you could build walls and stuff it just it defeated me i had no idea like i really didn't get it uh, focus was off live really appreciate your work thank you so much thank you i'm hoping y'all are getting enough of this live stream because my internet is the worst so here's little things to help people out and i'm probably not gonna so you see here i had her looking straight and forward so it kind of straightened out her neck a bit um but then here you know she's looking down so you, you know anyone who looks down you're just gonna start getting like neck folds so that's a lot of little things you just have to pay attention to. <laughs> I guess you like Mario. I mean, I play I play a couple of different games. That's stuff you gotta remember. I'm like, I'm not old, but I'm like an old school game. I I grew up with the Nintendo and I've played games since then. Um, so as far as like the games, and honestly, I don't have enough time for games now because I have kids. So. The games that I spend most of my time playing are either competitive games, so like fighting games. Um, I'm trying to get back into Killer Instinct. I was like really obsessed with it for a while. Um, and I've been playing Animal Crossing a lot. There's no shooters right now that I'm feeling. I mean, uh, Gears of War is probably one of my top, top rated shooters and i don't i don't like first person shooters i like third person so that's why fortnite when it first came out i was kind of like oh what is this it looks kind of cool but yeah thoughts on xt30 as a second body for the xt3 during event wedding I think it's actually super awesome. Um, I love my XT30. And the only reason I'm getting rid of it is because I'm gonna I'm replacing it with the XT4. But the XT30 is awesome and it's great as a backup camera. The quality on it is like the exact same as the XT3. I actually um here's another video. I don't know if y'all watched. Well, when I first started out if you ended up watching my uh, my session where I shot with the X-T30 and the X-T3. But that's a great example of how like the quality on the cameras is basically the same. So they're great, great cameras to kind of work with each other. What happened? This is it here. Y'all, I'm, I'm so sad. I am so, so sad that the internet's not working. I shoot maternity portraits and after a couple of your weddings behind the scene videos, I totally wanna start in weddings. Nice. Yeah, weddings are fun. They're, they're high stakes. There's a lot going on, but they're fun. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, my um, 
OBS is over here like, dropping all the frames, oh no. <laughs> I'm mad too, because then some of my friends, um, they also, they have like smaller YouTube channels. And they're like, how long does it take you to upload a video? I'm like, 50 years, what about y'all? And they're like, oh, we have like 450 megabits upload speeds. And I'm like, but unfortunately, the townhome community that I'm in Did it miss that? Huh. I think I had the XD4 on continuous by accident. But yeah, my, my upload speeds are like four megabits per second, barely. And then now with everyone at home too, like. Did I get normal photos of them? Audio is good, but video is very pixelated. Yep. How awesome. That's like half the point. Y'all can't even see the photos. I'm so mad, y'all. Why did I move them? I'm about to move just so I can have better internet. <laughs> like in all seriousness <laughs> like really because I cannot stand it um, these photos are all XT4 Here goes the actual wedding and the ceremony. What mic am I using? This is the blue mic Yeti. They come in different colors, but it, this is the white one. Um, I think it's, it's not really synced up with my camera, but whatever. Um, but they sound good, especially when you get them close to you. I wonder where I have my audio set to actually as far as bandwidth. Because if the audio is set to too high, then it's like eating up. No, I have it at 44.1. Yeah. At this point, it's literally just the internet. I think I've set everything. I'm only streaming at 1080. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the stream. Oh well. We'll just we'll keep going. But yeah, all of the majority of this is like a normal wedding. It's just way less people. Wow, I got my camera. I was recording the ceremony for them as well. The worst lighting in the world. Also, I feel bad for everyone in the ceremony. They're literally like standing in the sun the whole time. There was all this nice shade, but they were standing in the sun the whole time. 
So here's a Brenizer I tried to take. I usually do that, but I was too close. So it be it came out like very fisheye like this. So I'm probably not going to deliver this photo. Um, it's too warped for me to actually be able to use it. Like I want it nice and flat, but. Ceremonies are always pretty straightforward. Take a couple photos, take some different angles. Try to look for facial expressions and stuff. What if you cropped? Cropping helps some, but the thing with cropping is you don't want to crop too much depending on your camera's um, megapixel count and stuff and the sensor size and all that. Because the more you crop, the more photo you're, you, you're losing, basically. Also, what's up, Will? Welcome to the stream. <laughs> My boy, Will. But yeah, I almost, if I had the money, I would totally buy, um, like, a, I get the 100, get that 100 megapixels. These shadows are the worst. Yes, this was my first wedding with the X-T4. Um, I used it and the X-T3. Yeah, this was the worst. So the X-T3 was my other camera basically my xt4 was my long camera family photos for these you want to take a couple of photos and just make sure you have everyone's eyes open and while I'm skimming through these photos that's basically what I'm looking for it's just making sure the eyes are open for the most part and it's, it's never gonna be perfect <laughs> that's just kind of what it is But at the end of the day, bride and groom have to have their eyes open. If there's no other eyes open, then there's a problem. So the reason I liked this area for photos is because of the leading lines and that depth built from it. It's quite nice. Also, it's shaded enough so you have like the side lighting and stuff. This is going to be a Brenizer. I don't know if it'll work. We'll have to see. There's her flowers. And usually too, like I up over cull just so I have more options. I can always cull down when I start actually editing. Oh man, what did I do? Was that the A? It's X and three, okay. Yeah, if you over coal, you always have an option to like go back and just get rid of stuff you don't need. Whereas if you don't coal enough, then you're sitting there like trying to figure out 
like, oh, I don't have enough photos for this or enough photos for that. So this was inside the church. Um, I had them turn all the lights off. So it actually was pretty dark in there. Should I buy Canon 200D Mark II? Uh, I don't know that camera that well, but it should work just fine. Um, I know the Mark series are pretty good, like the 5D, but I'd have to study up on kind of the ins and outs on the camera. I believe at the end of the day, it really comes down to you as the photographer and knowing your camera and knowing lighting and knowing how to use all of that stuff to your advantage. Basically, if you don't know lighting and all that stuff, then no matter your camera or how good your camera is, it won't matter. Because basically, like, <laughs> you know, if you're not good, then the camera's not gonna help you get any better. I already called the photo I really wanted from that, so I'm skipping through these because I don't know which one was the one I got. But yeah, this should be a fairly easy little wedding to um, edit. Since, um, you know, it's like a short day. Like, I'm basically already at the end of it. Now we got folks hanging out. They had like a little reception, but it wasn't really a reception yet again. It's pandemic, so this is chilling, hanging out with everybody. But yeah, this is, this is the biggest thing. Like, don't... Don't take a wedding and just because it's the pandemic, like, you know, already go, oh, it's not going to be as good because it's not a normal wedding day. And and then just kind of approach it like, eh, like treat every day like it's an important day. Like, don't don't just give up on it because things are hard. You know, that's that's what photography is, is capturing the moment, no matter what's going on. We gotta be there. We're like photojournalists. I think either her or him works in the medical field, I can't remember. So they had a bunch of masks. So they had to, you know, had to take pandemic wedding photos. And then people asked me for photos, which tends to happen. <laughs> there it goes. There, and that's it. Cool. Your clients ever tune in? Uh, sometimes they do actually. <laughs> uh, a couple of my full wedding day videos, I had the bride actually watching with everybody in the live stream. So it does happen sometimes. Um, not often, but a lot of these people I know personally, like I actually, this bride, we went to high school together. Um, so yeah, sometimes I do have people tuning in. And you know, it's just having a good relationship with your clients. Cause for some, some photographers might be like, oh, this would be weird. Like, I couldn't stream and, you know, like have people watching it. So what I'm doing now, I'm going back to Lightroom. So what Photo Mechanic did was it saved that metadata into the files. So it's now it knows on the file which photos are five star. I'm gonna go back to Lightroom, pick four stars, anything four stars or less, 
and anything that's not edited so that I know that the photos I already edited won't be affected. And the reason that's important is that if it reads the metadata from the file of an edited photo, the edits aren't saved to the metadata. So it's gonna erase my edits. So I wanna choose only photos I haven't edited yet. I'm gonna select everything and then I'm gonna read metadata from file. So metadata, read metadata from files, it's gonna read. So now it's gonna go through all those photos and it's gonna find which ones are five star and you'll see it's kinda of like subtracting some of the photos out because those are the ones that aren't selected as five star. Hey, hey, thanks for all the well wishing, y'all. No, you're not the only one that's lagging. My internet is the worst. So now basically I'm just waiting for Lightroom to read the metadata off of all the files. That usually takes a couple minutes and then from there I start editing. But yeah, this is, this is the worst. My internet is the absolute worst. I'm like ethernet end and everything and it just like, it is still the worst. I'm not a fan at all. Like I'm barely getting a thousand kilobits. So that means I'm getting like one megabit per second upload speeds right now. <laughs> Yay. During the pandemic, that's really what it comes down to, which sucks. Like I love streaming, especially while I'm editing. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. I know, it's so sad. It's so sad. I wish there was something I could do about it too, but the, the community I live in, they're on a contract with like one of the worst internet companies. So like, there's literally nothing I can do. And I think like I can drop my kilobits per second for my upload speeds or whatever inside OBS, but then um, YouTube is like, you're not. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's my internet. Internet for like, you know, everyday stuff. So they're always like, ooh, sign up for this great, you know, 200 megabits. And it's not, it's not just for streaming, like, I edit photos and upload them to the internet and they take forever because my upload speeds suck. I make videos for YouTube and I upload them to the internet in 4K and they take forever because my internet sucks. You know what I mean? Like I actually need the internet down and up. And so I always hit up these companies and I'm like, yo, I need better internet. And they're like, do you do business? And I was like, I could do business, but what are y'all giving me? And they're just like, you can get like 400 megabits download speeds. And I'm like, what about upload speeds and streaming? And they're like, oh yeah, you can watch Netflix so awesome on, on 200 megabits download speed. And I'm like, <laughs> and then they just leave me hanging. And I'm like, okay guys. Okay, I changed how, I'm gonna start event photography and I need to pass to Fuji. Which low budget camera do you suggest? My idea is the XD20. 23 still using the same lenses photography they just immediately are like you need the fastest at the end of the day like i get by with who is already i got 10 down i'm glad that i at least get my 200 down I had was 100 up and down i used to upload my photos and go to upload anything it takes me out but i don't do it that often. i don't i'll show up on the day of and kind of get exactly where everything is but music i play saxophone i play which is basically least no Wrong. you get the sheet music and you can see the chord changes so from the chord changes that's kind of like you're where you're gonna be so you can be like oh cool 
I have a base now, I understand chord changes or my base. So that's, it does make it a little bit harder though if you're, I think it just skips through parts of it. So yeah, I'm kind of mad right now that I'm getting such bad upload speeds. Oh, this sucks. They're dealing with a lot of people saying that now. So like now I'm not even set apart from everyone. Like before it wasn't so bad because not everyone was at home and not everyone was able to use. And if I hit them up, they're gonna be like, bro, everyone's dealing with it. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, cause yeah, these live streams are fun and they're nice and then just immediately drop back. Me all of my five star just about there. Cool. So we have our metadata red and so now I can sort everything like I normally do. So here are all my five star photos. Looks like I have 422 photos in total. And then I go ahead and kind of sort out my photos. So we're going to make a new folder. So a collection set, name it after the couple. Uh oh, am I actually getting good internet? Is it working? So here's their folder. And then we're gonna create a smart folder. Nope. My glimmer of hope is gone. <laughs> Ours, the source folder contains all. And that's the folder where their files are in. And that should be it. So we create it and there it is. So here's our 422 photos thing by what part of the bowl part here Bub. so we and then we'll make a smart collection of that same thing Boom. and there it is so now i know i feel like i'm editing so many photos this is getting ready bride and then here goes that section details miss it I really want to ask you a question did they oh I've never done that style of photography I'm gonna email you their logo and then you just apply it to the photo which is pretty easy to do you can do that right inside of Lightroom as a um oh. <laughs> I can't remember what those overlays are called details okay, so here's getting ready bride and then I'm gonna split this in the first look. <laughs> I think the internet has a virus. And then here's our first look and couple portraits. There we go. Whole world doing it right now. Here's our group portraits. Group portrait. Oops. Ceremony. But once it loads fully, it will be a great watch. Portrait section. Small wedding. It's important to get these couples' photos. So that you know they don't feel so bad about this pandemic wedding season i'm just gonna call this reception even though it's not really a reception so couple portraits this would be group And I'll count this as reception. Group. Cool. So now I have my whole wedding day sectioned off into sections. Thing. How fast do you normally go in about three to four weeks? 
weeks, I feel like I'm taking too long. So see here, detail section is like six photos. So I'm, I mean, I guess it's the three because the one. Like I hate for my, um, nope. Three as far as quality is pretty comparable. I didn't see a big difference between the two. <laughs> Um, the whole stream I've been talking about that. My internet, the internet, it's even worse than it. They only give me 10 megabits upload speeds. Okay, so now that I have some of my photos in here that are already edited, I can cull this down a little bit and I can see it. Yeah, like most of these can go. The sync most of this stuff across and it. I don't know if on YouTube's end as far as how too much. I don't know what that. The stream is being, that would make sense. YouTube. But yeah, it's, it's pretty. I didn't hear the answer to my question because of the lag, so I hope you can rehear it later. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I just want good internet. Let's see if we can straighten this up. The white balance on the XT4 seems a little weird. It's like always very off. It wants to be like extra cool all the time. It keeps coming back to it gets to a point where the internet's okay and then it gives out again almost like immediately it looks like it's trying to hold on for the moment the magenta is off i feel like God, I said synchronizing this stuff should be easy. Y'all, my internet is so bad, I don't understand. System, but at Fuji, rent one of the XT series, three points for Fuji's. Um, the XT3 was the one, or no, the XT2 was the one that got my foot in the door. Like, I tried it out one time and I was like, this thing is dope. And then I was Fuji all the way. You'll definitely uh, rotate this. This is the groom getting ready. Pretty good overall, everything looks good. And typically what I would do is I would export this now and then upload it later. Any lens to pair up? Um, D6 is so like the F2 versions of the lenses. So like the 23 F2, 35 F2, um, they're nice to focusing system. Ride getting ready photos. Yeah. Overall, I did the photos. And then just like nins from the time being. So this was my original edit. So I'll check out the rest of these and for the most part, they're good. A little thing. Oh, it makes it looks like you missed the focus. Or comfortable with, I love it. Needs to be rotated.
But yeah, this this is wedding photographer editing. Quick, efficient. Get it done quick. You don't want to sit here mulling over photos for 50 years to make sure that they're like, you know, absolutely perfect. You want to get it good when you take the photos and then from there go ahead and be able to make them good. This looks like welcome to the stream. It's a bit looks good. XT4, it looks like I'm um, this one can sync. Uh, I don't need both of these. I got Abdi Mark III and Fuji XT3. What shall I say? So I do. So I, I actually did that at this wedding that I'm editing right now. Um, I recorded some of the ceremony from them. Lenses and plop it. Ceremony. I should have tried it not to. And I put my X down, whichever camera you're moving the ceremony. Cool. So there's all of that. Getting ready section. I've like always done that. I don't know. I just like the way I feel like it works better. And grab all of those and sync them. Starting to get that summertime heat. Which is always annoying. Like, I don't know what that is, but it. And then again, more close ups. So we'll black and white though. I can sync the rest of these with like this photo. Let's see. Yep. A little black and white this one. I hurt so bad right now. That's all done now too. Those, but all together stuff, you can go pretty fast with your edit. So that's because coming up with me, I'm gonna go ahead and jump off your questions and everything worked out. Thanks again for hanging out with me while I'm streaming and hopefully we'll figure out this internet thing and get, get a little bit of a better stream going on, but 